With so much happening before the grand opening this weekend, like we got this rig set up, I wanted something special in the lobby for it. I wanted something to say like, I don't know, part of me I feel like is a, is a little bit hipster, a little bit body, but I don't know. Being in Australia and Bali, I saw these cafe racers and I contacted Danny here and Danny from Tell them about you. You have a TV show? Yeah, we have a TV show. My shop's called Disown Customs. Uh, out of Ohio. Out of Ohio, Cleveland, yeah. We called it Disown because my mom said she'd disown me if I ever got a motorcycle. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's a great name. But that's uh, Disown uh, Customs. She's my biggest fan. And uh, so, yeah, this is what we do. We, we work on old bikes. We try to make something what we call a modern vintage motorcycle. You know, this bike's 40 years old, but that's inside insane. the heart of an 18 year old, ready to go. Yeah. Too. So I, I reached out to, to him because, well, I, I knew you through Lewis Howes, was it? Yeah. And you come to LA quite a bit. Right. Right. And uh, then, you know, I was thinking, I need, in St. George, there's so many beautiful spots to ride. It's raining right now, so they're not beautiful right now. But in the summertime, the springtime, even in the wintertime, getting out to like Zions National Park, I want to do a little bit of just cruising. Nothing major, nothing long distance. And just even from like home to here to the gym but this is also i think is gonna i'm gonna keep it in the lobby <laughs> so this is a honda 750 a cb 750 correct 78 it's seven, 1978 yeah and what, what were some of the the modifications i mean we, you changed tons and tons on it yeah um i think my favorite stuff is the leather accents but let's go over what you did all right well this tank is actually off of a kawasaki really <laughs> so we really like the lines in the tank uh, from the Kawasaki bike. So it's from a KZ. We thought, you know what, let's throw it on this bike. My mechanic, Jordan, was like, I love this tank. We gotta put it on something. So we threw it on there, got rid of the Kawasaki badges, put the Honda ones on there. Um, the powder coat, this is actually- that's, that turned out really cool. Yeah, yeah, this is the first bike. We actually did this design. We call it uh, Cleveland Homicide. I which like is <laughs> Cleveland Homicide. Yeah, because uh, whenever you black out a bike, they call it murdering it yeah. out. Yeah, so, so this is Homicide. This, the leather is super cool too. I remember you reaching out asking if I wanted the lighter or the darker. Mm -hmm. We decided to go with the lighter. Right. And I think it pops more. I think it does too. It's a, it's a nice contrast. It stands out. You know, we did the, the grips and there's a cool bike shop that's right around the corner from my shop called Joy Machine. And I went up to them. I'm like, nice. oh, where can I get this? And they had it in stock. So we got this and then we wanted to match the seat. So That's it great. all looked the same, and then I had all this stuff left over. I'm like, we gotta accent something else. So we went ahead and put it on the Kickstart. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen it on Kickstart, it's a so it was a little either. different, and it breaks it up when you're looking from the side. It just kind of, you know, stands out. It really does. So, you know, all the little colors, the red hoses, the the chrome. We didn't really want chrome. We wanted that brushed aluminum stainless yeah. look. So uh, a lot of time with some Scotch Bright patches. Really? Stuffing it up. Oh yeah, everything. I mean, all this stuff was all chrome. The thing. So was you chrome. just just scratched it up and made yeah, it, and then yeah. and then made it look smooth. You know, a lot of it is either do you spend eight thousand dollars or eight thousand hours, and this was a lot of hours wow. that was put into this bike, and it's just the little details like that. So now I have to admit, the only time I've ever ridden a motorcycle is in high school. I rode it after my senior year. It was a Honda actually, mm -hmm. um, and I just rode it around, kind of cruised around. I'm not going to jump on this bike today just because I don't want my first time to be in the <laughs> rain. But you took it around. It's loud, isn't it? It is loud. It is aggressive. I mean, we were shooting videos out by, uh, I think it was called Silver Reef, yeah, okay. which is an uh, old gold mining town. Yeah. And it was super cool just to kind of ride around there. You That's could cool hear shots. me coming before you actually see me. I saw the video and I was yeah. like, that well, bike is loud. Should it's we fire cool. it up? <laughs> I'm going to let you fire it up. Let's see. We're going to have to now. I'm going to teach you. It's still in one place. Well, the key's like right here. Yeah. Let's come check out where you put the, the ignition key. Yeah. I've never actually seen that. No, that's not where it was originally. That is so dope. Usually it was up here with the gauges and, and this whole dashboard thing. Right. It's totally 70s and not really that appropriate. Huh. But it might take a little bit. It's a little cold now. So you turn the key to the first position, lights turn on, you pull the choke all the way up. Okay. It's still, it's cold blooded. Nice. 
this. Oh, here we go. That sounds insane. That is, that sounds like a Harley. Oh yeah, yeah. That's you, insane. You, if you pull up next to a Harley on this thing, you rev the engine, they might pee just a little. <laughs> that was so loud. That might be the loudest bike I've ever heard. People I mean, it, I like that because you want that. That way, cars know where you're at. Cars know where you're coming from and everything like that. You know, it was cool oh, when we were pulling in, too. and the bike was in the back of the truck. People would pull up next to me, like here in St. George. Yeah. They're waving to me like that's bad. Really? Oh yeah. We were like, I'd pull out like I'd be at a stoplight. People are next to me, big like. Ah, I love the bike. I, I love like, it. That's cool. I really do. I, I I honestly think and the, the handlebars too. That was one thing that when you showed me the bike before you guys did the different things, the handlebars were immediately something that I loved. Mm -hmm. And then you even got the LED lights in the back here too. Oh yeah. So. So you got you got the old school style, and then you got this new 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 school flare here. And then you got the turn oh, signals. Yeah. Everything's into it. You know, integrated into it, and. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start nice and easy with it. I'm gonna ride with TJ. The guys from Gymshark all ride cafe racers. So we got Lex coming in. He's got a couple actually bullet bikes too. But they're all in, in England. You know when they ride. I guess they're kind of used to this weather riding in. But they're gonna come out. They're gonna rent some bikes. Uh, I told Ben that he can ride this one if he'd like. Um, I'm excited though because I want to get slowly get into it. And then like I said, this isn't gonna be my everyday mode of transportation. But uh, I want to ride it at least two, three times a week, mainly like Sunday, and then coming to work a couple times, just because, I don't know, I've always had this, this, it's not even so much about speed for me, it's about just getting out into the open air and in, in a place like St. George in Southern Utah, we have so many cool things to see. This is one of those ways that, you know, I'll feel closer to nature. Like I go, I love going on hikes and things like that. This is, for me, I don't know. Well, thank you so much, man. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we're definitely, uh, like I said, you guys can see out here. I don't know about taking it out today. I just don't think that that would be a great idea with the rain, I'm trying to stay safe. I will be wearing a helmet. I'll be getting uh, a protective leather jacket with all of the protective riding gear in there. Well, sweet, <laughs> man. Thank you so awesome, much. Man. And where can they where can they follow you and everything like that? Everything's at Disown Customs. Okay. You know, uh, and the TV show is where is that where is that air? Uh, now it's on Amazon Prime. The Wrench nice. Against the Machine was last year. This year we're filming a new one, and uh, I'll talk more about that once it gets closer nice. to the release. Okay. But we're really excited about it and uh, traveling with motorcycles. That's is, dope. Uh, that's it's what I love to do. I really appreciate you, man, for coming all the way out here to St. George and uh, got me out of the snow. So. Yeah. Well, I wish I wish we had nicer weather for you, but we'll definitely be following along if you guys like motorcycles if you just like I just being in Bali in Australia the whole cafe racer lifestyle for me it was something that's just really cool from from the bikes to the clothing to it's just it's just a cool community so if you want to check out more follow this guy here appreciate you Danny thank you Steve thank, thank you, you so very much. much awesome the bike coming here is like signifying the fact that hey the gym grand opening is happening whether we are ready or not it's here that bike being here kind of like i remember circling the date on the calendar when he was getting here me like oh the gym will be ready by then as you guys can see the gym's not ready we have some equipment that we're still waiting for we obviously have to clean this up we have to get things like the smith machine put together we have to get all these dumbbells we need another dumbbell holder and i'm not sure we're gonna get everything done by the grand opening. Things look great in here, we've come a long way, but we're not completely finished yet. Um, our barber, like I said, we have a barber shop inside. He's also a pretty damn good artist. So what he's gonna be doing, this is his canvas, and he's going to be painting. I'm a little bit nervous for this. That's the base paint. This is the glossy paint over top of it. He's going up, up, up in that and it should be pretty epic. So things are, are definitely coming together. We have the wall rig, which they looked like they had to yank off while I was gone. They had to yank off some of the wooden planks in there. We have a lot of work to do before this Saturday. A lot of work to do. Let's get cracking. You scared? You nervous? Don't tell you why I said that. Oh, I'm nervous. He's freaking, they're going to town out there. So that wall, we have tons and tons of black. And then this is gonna be like crazy color. And we might throw our gym logo. But on either side, 
of the plastic. It's gonna say fit and then cult or fitness culture, we don't know yet. But that, that color will either be the coolest thing in the world or the ugliest thing in the world. There will be no in between. It'll either make the gym or break the gym. People have been asking Steve, where's your gym located? Like they know it's in St. George, but it doesn't show up on Google Maps yet. It doesn't show up on Instagram yet. So we are registering it with Google right now. Submit. Congrats. Hopefully by the time you guys look up the address to drive here or fly here and stay at a hotel and then come here, hopefully that address is up. If you guys want to know it, it is 314 North 3050 East Suite B1. It's also on the fitness culture bio. Here to go work out, finally. Six uh, pre-workout. Six o'clock at night. It's a good time to take pre-workout. 6 p.m. All right. And look, we've been going through designs. I put up some designs on Twitter the other day. We didn't really love any of them, so we really need to go with the design here. That way, when he gets finished with that paint, that wall, we can throw our design in white on top of it. What do you got there? Christmas present, man, from my good friend Steve. Oh. We're gonna be like twins, but not really, because I have Adidas and you have Nikes. I like the way the Nikes look more, I'm not gonna lie. They look nice. <laughs> what do we got today? I don't know yet. It's leg day, fam. It's definitely leg day. Here's what I'm working with. Here's what I'm working with. Some Addy powers. And I cannot wait to lift all of this weight. That's my goal for the year, to lift all of that weight. We're actually just waiting for the storage that goes on the rack here. These will not be on the, on the floor. It's gonna be sick though. We're gonna have all these colored plates, these dope ass colored plates, and then the wall is just gonna like tie in with the plates. Today's leg workout. We're gonna start off with some back squats. Jake's just getting mobile there. Can you see him? Can you spot Jake? Behind the rogue, jerk blocks. Did I say it right? Jerk, jerk blocks is. That'd be wrong. You guys can probably relate to this. You have a long, hard day at work. You got people stressing you out. You got 15 people who aren't doing their job like they should be. We actually only have like five or six people not doing their job like they should be. Or you're thinking, you know, your rig's gonna get attached and it looks great, but now it needs to get painted. The wall is getting painted by the guy who's the barber in the shop and you hope he doesn't f the whole thing. And you're stressed, but guess what? You gotta work out. You gotta get it shit done or else the, what got you here, what got you to this point goes away and you have nothing. No one follows Fat Steve. Yes, I got a spray tan and I'm like, oh, I look pretty good. It's just cause I have a spray tan, I don't look good at all. But the problem is I was light and looked really bad and I got a spray tan, I'm like, oh, I'm not, I, I don't look as bad as I think. I know you girls out there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right? So now we're gonna go get a leg day in. You ready? I didn't get a spray tan as you can see. Let's hit this leg workout. It doesn't matter how tired you are, just get shit done. All right, got up to the heaviest I've gone in a while because of my back. We got up to, what was that, 315, 50, 365. Nothing special, but the back is still not great. So now we hit three sets with heavier weight. Now we're doing some box squats at 225. So these, we're going close grip stance, so. I was real narrow there. We got that box underneath. When you do a real low squat, incorporate obviously a lot more glutes, a lot more even hamstrings, but also it's a little bit tougher if you're not mobile in the back to go down. So I start feeling it a lot more in my lower back. So doing the close stance, working more of that outside of the quad and then not going down enough, or I should say, not going down as deep as I would be on normal squats, kind of taking a little more stress off the lower back and glutes, just keeping on the quads. Next up guys, we have our off the bench, single leg lunge, and then we're supersetting it. This is when we're supersetting a single hamstring curl. So whenever I do a single leg movement like the lunge, we try to superset it. If we're going to superset it, we superset it with another single leg movement. This is important, so obviously we're talking about balance. One, 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 one. You're giving each leg equal rest time in between. Not a 
long workout tonight. Sometimes it's just about getting in here and getting something done. I wanted to kind of show you guys this before it gets finished up. You guys can see. It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress that you could see glimpses of awesomeness in that. But sometimes along the way, things frighten us. You get halfway through something, you're like thinking, start self-doubting. You start questioning if you're legit. You start questioning if you're real or a fraud. Like if you have what it takes. And in this process of putting a gym together, I've questioned that myself many times. Like, do I have what it takes? Like, yeah. I've been in this industry for a long time. Do I have what it takes though to take things to the next level? I've been an optimum athlete my pretty much my fitness career. What am I going to do without them? What am I going to do without bodybuilding.com? When you start making decisions and you leave that safety net, what are you going to do? And this gym I think has kind of, it's all kind of come to a head at once. And, you know, I, I, I I'm no longer with Optimum, I'm no longer with a lot of, you know, brands that I enjoyed being with back in the day that changed and, you know, I'm, I'm now on my own, now doing this gym and there's been times where I'm just like, am I for real? Is this going to all crumble and fall? Am I, am I stacking a, you know, a, 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 am I putting together a house of cards that, you know, with one, one mess up, one breath of air, one knockdown in life, the whole thing comes crumbling down. And you guys might look watching that KO Steve. Come on, you're you're thinking that like, you know, you you have a name in the fitness industry, but I don't really see it that way. And I don't think a lot of people out there that you think might, they're the people that strive to be successful are people. A lot of times are the most fearful, and I think that's what keeps them going. And with this gym opening up on Saturday with this huge launch of an app, it's something we're trying to change, rewrite how the fitness industry more or less um, does programming. We want you know affordable programming. We want to do it for every kind of genre pretty much in the fitness industry. We want to do mobility, we want to do nutrition. And it's just, you know, you're gonna have hiccups along the way, but it's about just putting in the work. And you know, if you never, if you never give up on it, at some point you're gonna have some success. And when you have that success, that's what really defines you. What do you do with it? Do you sit back and go to expos and just party and you kind of go out and buy a bunch of nice cars and think that this is always gonna be how it is? Or do you live, I dare say, fearful of going back to Texas Roadhouse and having to work again? You know, being a failure, getting divorced in life. I was divorced at 21 or no, 23. I was married at 21. So you have these failures in life. Those failures are what make you. Those failures are what keep you going. So don't be afraid to fail. Because when you fail, that's, that's that, that failure is what is going to be ultimately what makes you succeed. That failure is what's going to ultimately drive you to, to win. Because you've been at rock bottom. You failed in a relationship or in a marriage. Um, so don't ever get too down on yourself and don't ever think your shit doesn't stink. Because ultimately, you're gonna get knocked down. You're gonna have to get back up. And I think that that's, that's kind of a, a telltale sign of someone who's gonna be successful or not. And even during this whole process, I've been scared. On that note, I am scared of that thing. That's a choice I am scared about. Um, that's no toy there, and I realize that. Um, so we're gonna take all the proper precautions, calculated calculated uh, decisions, but right now it's just sitting in the middle of the lobby. I love it. <sighs> Scary choices, but fun choices. So hopefully if you guys are going through something like this, I get a lot of you guys that talk to me about your failed relationships. Um, don't let those things define you, but learn from those things. I'm out.